a requirement for displaying the energy bar charts at the starting position, three quarters height, one quarter height, and ending height. All right, to make bar charts in spreadsheets, we're gonna need a data table that has each of those positions and what type of energy they have. So I'm gonna to go to column in, start with just writing those four positions. Position one was at the starting height. Position two was when the jumper was at the three quarters height. Position three is when they were at one quarter height. And then that fourth position was at the ending height. All right, and then at each of these heights, we're gonna need the energy. So that's gravitational energy, kinetic energy, and elastic energy. And to be thorough, I uh, will also do the total energy. All right, now to figure these things out, we need to know the height of the jumper and the stretch of the jumper. So I guess I do need two more columns over here to the left that I can use in my calculation. So I'll just put height and stretch of cord. All right. So the height at the starting height, that's pretty clear. We already have that. So I'm just going to scroll over to grab that. I'll use the scroll bar. The starting height was right here at D4. So I'll click return. And then the three at three quarters. Okay, so I'm gonna say equals D4 times Three quarters is 0.75, so that'll give me the three quarter height. And then the one quarter height, again, that's gonna be D4 times one quarter, which is 0.25. And then our ending height, we have already found that. So I'm gonna go set that equal. I'm gonna go arrow over here till I can find it. Oh, the ending height here is at D21. Nice, now the stretch. The stretch at each of these, this is going to be a little more tricky, a little more thought. The starting height, the stretch is going to be zero. And at three quarters, it'll also be zero. One quarter, that's a little tricky. I got to go back and look at my system analysis and my picture. When the jumper is one quarter high, well, similar to how we found the string, we can do that same trick. We know the starting height and then the ending height is one quarter. And so we can take the starting height minus the ending height minus the height of the jumper. This is what we're trying to find, the stretch, so I won't subtract that. I will then also subtract the stretch of the cord and the string, sorry, not the stretch of the cord, the length of the unstretched cord and then the string added. So that's a little bit of a long equation there, but okay, so we got the starting height minus that current ending height, which I'm gonna grab right here, minus the height of the jumper. Gotta go back over here. I think that's this one, but I'm gonna check. Yep, height of jumper. Let me go back in there, hit enter. Minus the unstretched length of the cord minus the string added. Okay. That makes sense. And then the stretch of the cord at the end, we know we've already calculated that. That was just right here in D16. And I'm just gonna verify that's right. Yep, stretch a bungee. Nice. Okay, I'm gonna make this look a little nicer. So I'm gonna get this color coded. I'll use the second one, and this is a really important thing, so I'll color that one. I'm gonna auto. So if you go between two columns, you get that black arrow going to the right. If you click, click, it auto uh, sizes everything. I also wanna center everything, and maybe vertically center it too. 
All right, that's looking better. I also want to clean this up and have them all show the same number of decimal places. That looks pretty good. This column looks like it needs to be a little wider to me. And okay, these could be a little smaller and a little more compact. There we go. All right, now let's figure this out. Gravitational energy we're really good with, so that's just mgh. So I need to go find where I have mass. So I'm gonna use the scroll bar. We've already told the user to put in the mass, so that's there, mg. Again, since this is a really important one that we want to turn out right, we want to predict the future. I'm going to use a more precise value of the strength of gravity, 9.8, times the height. And that height is going to be changing, so I'm going to be using my data table over here, mgh. And I can just drag that down. Oh, something's gone wrong. Let me check that. Ah. I need to always be grabbing that same mass. So I'm gonna go ahead and put in dollar signs in front of the D3. Ah, there we go. All right, so now just looking over, again, we know that the starting gravitational energy is equal to our total energy. So I'm gonna go ahead and set that equal. And then I know my total energy is gonna be that for the whole jump. So I'm gonna set it equal to this, but I do need those dollar signs. And drag that down for the last two. And since I'm gonna work backwards here at the elastic energy, we know that equation from the elastic energy lab, and we can use it one half times the spring constant. We gotta go find that. Spring constant is right here in D13 times the current stretch, the current stretch. So I'm going to go over to my table and find the current stretch of the cord squared. So you can use shift six and do that caret two, hit return. Now I can drag that equation down. Oh, something's gone wrong. Ah, I always need to use the same K, so I need to lock that cell. So I'm going to put dollar signs in front of the D and 13 and drag that equation down. Okay, I don't like this, but I'm going to wait till I figure out the kinetic energy to fix it. All right, now we have kinetic energy. Now this is a little trickier. We do have an equation for it, but we actually here need to use conservation of energy. So the kinetic energy is gonna equal, I guess the total energy minus all the other forms. So minus the gravitational and minus the elastic and whatever's left must be kinetic. And that makes sense, it's zero. Here it should be the difference of that 17 and the 13. 14, that's about right. And then, oh, that's perfect because we know at the bottom they're temporarily stopped. So I don't like this number of digits displayed, so I'm gonna actually reduce that. Okay, we need to make a bar chart for each of these. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab my positions in the form of energy. I'm just gonna select the four because we want to stack them to get the total energy. So now that I have them selected, I'm gonna go up to insert, chart, ooh, I don't want this, so let me go to setup. Look at that setup, line chart. I don't want a line chart, I want a bar chart. So I'm gonna look at these options. Oh, here it is. And I want them stacked. So I'll go ahead and select that. And there we have it. We have our forms of energy and the position. I might resize this and drag it over to underneath. Ooh. You might just need to drag it over and scroll a little bit and put it wherever you'd like. 